Hi everyone, it's January 19, 2022 and you are here watching the Awesome 10X Philippine Market Update and let's begin. So obviously, I will talk about the great inflationary crisis that is not just happening in USA, but it's happening worldwide. And so we all know that the Fed is forced to hike rates with as much as three to four interest moves on the upside, which means that all the stock markets in the whole wide world will fall. So obviously, you are seeing the dollar peso here spike up since January. Dollar peso has already depreciated from 50 pesos to 51.4, and it could well be on the 52.50, which will actually cripple the Philippines because the Philippines is largely importing a lot of products. Now, whether we import goods like oil or Philippines imports rice, let's go through the top Philippine imports of the Philippines as of 2020 and 2018. We know that the Philippines is a net import country. So let's go to the top 10 imports here. So the Philippines top 10 imports on the average exchange rate, the Philippine peso is depreciating about 5% against the dollar. And that means every Filipino must pay 5% more every time the dollar peso exchange is already depreciating. So we only earn pesos, but we have to pay dollars. That, al that already kills the average Filipino. And inflation is actually killing not just the rich, but actually all the people. Poor, rich, everyone gets killed. Let's take a look at the number one. The number one import of the Philippines apparently is electrical machinery and equipment, mineral fuels, including oil, machines, including computers, cars, vehicles, iron and steel when you build a home, plastics, everything that you consume, the packaging, cereals, apparently is 3 billion. Aba, kumakain pala na cereals mga Piloy. Kala ko puro mga pansit kanton tayo. Aircraft, spacecraft, optical medical apparatus, and articles of iron and steel. The top 10 imports include 70% of all the product purchases from other countries. The other top category, of course, is Philippines highest. Ah, okay. So, cereals pala tawag nila sa rice and wheat. Siyempre, naisip ko, dapat rice, di ba? Like, even a normal Filipino knows that the Philippines imports kanin, bigas. Kasi bigas is the Philippine uh, staple food. So, let's take a look at rice. Uh, let's go to Google to know um, how much... Uh, does rice prices rise? Guys, ni naman kasi ako na namamalengke. Eh. So, hindi ako masyado magaling when it comes to the increase in presyo ng kanin. I do know that the global prices are uh, rising, the commodities. Pasensya, uh, di naman ako super duper aware sa presyo ng kanin. Bigas. But yung mga nagsha-shopping dyan, alam nyo kung magkano umangat ang Philippine uh, price goods. Sige. So, tingnan natin si Google. Haring Google, tell me, Philippine um, products inflation. So, September 7, 2021, the Philippines average inflation stood at 4%. Uh, furnishing, household, routine, household maintenance. Siyempre, gas. Kapag umangat yung gas, alam naman yung taxi driver mo. Hindi sa sa'yo papas on yung cost. Siyempre, oo. If everything is going up, restaurants will also pass it on to you. Kesyo Shakey's Pizza pa yan or Jollibee or kahit sino, hindi sila papayag na lahat ng cost kakainin nila. So let's go to this. Inflation rates in the Philippines is now at the highest price over the last two years. This is um, as of August 8th. Uh, September 8, 2021. Basahin po natin. The overall year-on-year -year increase in prices of widely used goods has actually accelerated due to the higher food and utility prices amidst the stricter lockdown. So um, headline inflation rates in the Philippines nasa 5%. Tapos may 5% depreciation ka ng Philippine peso. So let's take a look at the commodity food groups here. Okay, so um 6.5% daw for the food and non-alcoholic beverages. Housing, water, 3%. Restaurant and goods, 4%. Transport, 7 Healthcare, 3%. Um, alcoholic beverages and tobacco, sin tax, 10%. Actually, guys, usually itong mga to, underwhelmingly uh, underestimated. 
Pag nakasulat sa inflation na 4%, the actual is 8 or 10 or 20. So let's go to ask the normal Filipino kung ano yung totoong inflation na nangyayari sa Pilipinas. Punta tayo sa average Filipinos. Okay? Tingin tayo sa ano. Magkano ang kanin? Magkano ang bilihin? Yun ang importante. Okay? So let's go here. Yung mga ulam ninyo. Itlog, sardinas, yun ang importante. Magkano ang presyo nun? Magkano ang presyo ng bilihin? Food prices like meat, bacon, makakakain ka pa ba ng, inflate, ng bacon? Okay, Philippine inflation as of 2021, January is 4%. We saw that it hit about 5% uh, in, uh, in this level nung mga August. As of 2022, as of 2022, kasi nag-import tayo ng lahat ng produkto abroad, depreciated ka ng 5, tapos oil mo um, sky high. Look at oil today, it's $85, nagigera pa sa Ukraine. Um, so uh, Ukraine and Russia, diba? Uh, crude oil is $85, diba? Take a look at that. Kung lumalabas ka ng bahay, yung, yung gas pump, nakikita mo, tumaas from 50 pesos to 60 pesos ang petron gas, di ba? Tingnan natin, punta tayo sa mga gas prices, gas station. Lumabas kayo sa bahay nyo, oh, 50 pesos, 60 pesos, nakita nyo nag-inflate, di ba? So in other words, guys, pinapass on ng mga companies na to, lahat ng mga mataas na bilihin para sa consumer. Therefore, even if retail sales go up, walang kwenta yon, Kasi the actual buying power of the Filipino is actually depreciated. So what is the huge effect of the Philippine economy here? Contraction. Kung wala kang, um, let's assume that you are a Filipino with a fixed job and a fixed salary. Di naman tumataas yung income mo. Let's say you earn about 40,000 pesos a month. Um, the average sales that you would spend is still 40000 if you're not gonna borrow money. Di ka naman nangungutang. And even if gusto mo mangutang, most likely di ka rin pa uh, Not with this type of environment. Or if pautangin ka man nila, you're gonna get killed with credit card interest expenses. Uh, and so, I would say that um, yung sinasabi ng BSP na kaya nila mag-ease inflation, this is January 19, I don't believe it. Let me read it for you. The central bank's goal is to increase the use of digital payments to help slow down inflation in the long term due to cost reduction. Digitization is one of the huge changes that will have an effect in the long run. Um, may kinalaman ba ang digitization, guys, sa pagtaas ng presyo ng rice at ng sardinas? Wala po. In other words, di naman tayo nag indoor farming, wala tayong enough production yields dito, nangungutang pa nga tayo eh. Hindi nga tayo, maka, hindi nga tayo makaproduce ng sarili nating kanin guys, nag import pa tayo sa Vietnam. So anong pinagsasabi nito? By making payments and transactions more convenient, digitalization will reduce the cost of production and distribution for business. Not true. For consumer, digitalization is expected to improve the ease of getting information on products and services. The only thing that digitalization has done, guys, is instead na mag-shopping kayo sa SM, binibili nyo po sa Shopee. Binibili nyo po sa Lazada. So nawalan kayo ng rental expenses. In other words, guys, pinagluloko nyo ba ako na yung mga malls na yan kumikita ng limpak-limpak na salapi? Of course not. Hindi man tayo tanga, di ba? Obviously, hindi tayo tanga. In other words, if you look at the Philippine market, guys, who is at risk of the downside? The entire economy. That means, guys, take a look at EPHT. This is the MSCI Philippine ETF. For the last 10 years, guys, the Philippine ETF is at a bear market. Huwag niyong pinaglaloko mga tao, ha? Kasi napakaklaro nito, eh. Oh, 43, 40, from 2013 to 2022, if you keep your money in the Philippine Stock Index, your money has slowly been depreciating every year because wala naman sa Philippines actually nag-outperform. 
unless siguro hawak mo na lang is nagte-trade trade ka lang pag masyadong malalim buy pag mataas sell buy low sell high hindi ka pwedeng buy and hold sa ganitong klasing market right okay so this is your philippine index it looks like tapos na yon ito na yung resistance claro 34 you buy a put option on the Philippines, babagsak ng $28, brought about by whom? Okay, the EPHE largest is who else but SM Investments. SM Investments Corporation is trading at 1 trillion pesos with sales of how much? Sales are getting shot in many formats. Number one, SM's BDO is getting shot via GCash. Are you using digital payments? The answer is yes. Therefore, more and more money is going away from bank deposits. The average Filipino is going into payment services like SM. Now, uh, sorry, like Gcash. Now, I'm not saying that people aren't parking their money anymore with BDO. Of course, they are using the banks. But if you look closely here, for the next 5 to 10 years, will BDO grow massively if the Filipinos, the average Filipino, is going to park their deposits and total trillions in the likes of Gcash? So you have digitization, and we've seen this happen. In China, and Financial is the clear winner here, actually eating up the banks. Bank loans went to and Financial. So eventually, yes, people will borrow money, not via BDO, BDO credit cards, but actually I'd say it will go to the likes of uh, Gcash. So this is what for BDO. Top, top, this is what you call a potential top. Now, I think that BDO has a lot to... Um, a lot of uh, questions to answer, but I think that number one, if the consumer loans, will anyone, will, en will any businessman borrow money if the average Filipino cannot even buy a single good because of inflation? I don't think so. Therefore, consumer loan growth will go down, business loan growth will go down, a slower downfall will mean that BDO will fall. From the current price of 133, 128, I think it's a sell. Can you buy BDO at 110? Perhaps. If I'm wrong, I'm okay with it. But I think that the downside is downward. Now, I'm also going to tell you, obviously, SM Investments, how low can it go? It's getting attacked with Shopee, Lazada, right? You've got retail investors now shopping online. So that means that there are far less sales happening, therefore far less re rental and far less uh, sales. How do we know this? Just go to SM Investments. You go to google.com, yet again, our handy Google. SM Investments Corporation, please tell me the earnings. Boom. Okay, so SM's income as of 2020 declined by half from 70 billion to 30 billion. It doesn't look well on 2021 and 2022 either. So why is it that a company from 2019 till 2020 from 1,100 is still standing stall, stall here at 960? It should probably be 800 pesos. Now, I'm not trying to declare a war on these companies. This has nothing to do with it. I'm just giving you my opinion, my opinion, and nothing but just my opinion. It just tells me that I don't have a reason for now, and I could change my mind. Let's say that you might say, no, the Philippine economy is going to be resilient. The Philippine economy will actually be saved. The Philippine economy will just pump prime the market like hell. Uh, okay, I can think about those things. But as of the moment, I don't have a reason to be bullish. Now, let's take a look at this. The global rice prices are spiking during the pandemic despite the supply. So the COVID-19 pandemic actually saw that um, most commodity prices went down during the demand, uh, during pandemic because of lower demand. Nowadays, though, rice went the other way. Because of uh, the pandemic, not everyone actually um, produced and produced. Our agricultural sector in the Philippines did not produce enough rice. We don't have in the Philippines a strong agricultural business to save us in an inflationary crisis. Magkakaroon ng revolusyon. Okay? Kapag yung presyo ng bilihin umangat, magwewelga. Tingnan natin na ah. um Google tayo ulit. mrgoogle.com answer to me. Rice prices Philippines. I want to see historical history. 
Domestic retail price of rice. Magkano ang isang sako ng rice sa Pilipinas? Uh, at these price ranges, the whole price will be about 1850 to 2000 pesos per sack year 2020 po to. Rice prices going up. Okay? Historical retail prices of rice in the Philippines. Kanin. Okay? We're talking about the Philippine average consumer here. Hindi yung mayaman, hindi yung, may hindi yung mayaman. Okay, so ito 2020 to, uh, as the summer palay, draw season, lahat pa eh, uh, meron kang typhoon season, marami ka kaya sa Pilipinas problema. If somebody tells me that inflation is not gonna happen in the Philippines, sino niloloko mo? Average consumer, kaya mo lokohin? Siguro hindi. Lahat ng tao Pilipinas, alam nila may problema. Okay, so uh, sabi ni SM, nag-triple yung profit in 20 billion pesos, so nakakumback siya. Guys, from 70 billion, naging 40 billion, naging, te, naging 8 billion, tapos naging 20 billion. Does it even matter kung nag-triple yung price? Actually, guys, 20 billion pesos is still half the price of income that SM used to do. So sino niloloko mo? SM Investments, jump net income, 20 billion pesos. So what? E dati 70 billion kay. So it's still what? 50% down year over year, two years before pandemic. The, 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 the thing that you have to check here is magkano ka during pandemic and magkano ka after pandemic. So yun yung totoo, di ba? Raise 15 billion pesos from bonds. Okay, so si SM, one thing that they could do, of course, is borrow money. So SM has borrowed money, in fact, 15 billion pesos. From bonds, oversubscribed, Philippines gave them a triple A rating. What will they what will they do with 15 billion pesos? Um Philippine, Philippines is giving SM Magano 3% interest rate bato. Magano yung bonds na to. Um SM subsidiary has continued the nationwide expansion strategy, growing their footprint and improving product mix. If you're a retailer and you're gonna tell me that you will continue to make more malls, that is not a good idea. So no, I don't believe that is the right idea. Wrong strategy. The conglomerate ended with a debt to equity of 0.7 times. In fairness, it means that wala naman masyadong utang si SM, sound capital structure. Operating cash remained healthy, 14 billion pesos, which means that obviously SM can pay that. Nonetheless, I think that opening new stores is not a good idea. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I just think differently. Okay. Uh, historical rice prices. 25 pesos 2007. After 15 years, 50 pesos. Right? So, um, for, for, for like, I think for the average Filipino, hindi ko alam kung 50, baka na 60 pesos na yata yung, uh, ano, yung, yung, pe, yung, ano, yung isang kilo ng rice. Obviously, I need to go to the supermarket to know these things. Or, tingnan na lang natin si Pekaru. Magkano ba ang presyo ng, ng prices ngayon? Um, let's go to Mr. Pekaru. Or, punta lang tayo kay SNR. Sige, SNR, Pure Gold. Uh, punta tayo, mag-shopping tayo ngayon para makita natin yung presyo. Kina Pekaru na lang kasi para si Mega World Pekaru, marami siyang mga prices dito. Madali matingnan. Okay, so let's take a look. Magkano po ang presyo? What would you like to get? Rice. Give me kanin. Rice, please. How much is rice? Rice base. Oko na no, not that. Uh, as in bigas. Grain. Rice cup. Rice pilaf. Plain rice. Magkano po ang plain rice? Ano ba? Punta nga tayo sa food. Uh, Filipino food. Ano ba to? Kailangan ba... Hindi, puro restaurant to eh. Gusto ko yung talagang kanin. Sige, punta na nga lang na SNR. Google. Google, answer me here. By the way, guys, in an inflationary world, you might want to ask me, okay, Nikki, if you're bearish SM, if you're bearish the banks, what does that leave the Philippines? How do I park my money here? Okay, let me give you ideas. Last week, we gave you how to make 50,000 pesos parking in dividends. Did you see the Philippine market today? Okay, let's go to the Philippine market. The Philippine market is 7,300, which I think is expensive. There are companies here that are falsely valued. So obviously, I'd say one thing for you, 
Number one, stay away from growth stocks in the Philippines, especially no profitability. I don't care if it goes to 2 pesos. SPNEC, just take a look at it, 1.61. I'm not trying to pop the bubble here. It could go 5 pesos for all I care. But I would avoid it just because the market is in a very difficult situation going forward. I'd also say that even ASEN, Yes, you can see that clear trajectory downward, 12 pesos, 10 pesos. Could it go to 7 pesos? Could it go to 4 pesos? Yes, even the great AC energy is likely to fall. How about Wilcon? Is it trading at cheap valuation? The answer is no. 33 can go 28, can go 26, can go 19. How about Converge? I thought that this is the third telco for telco in the Philippines. Yes, it's a bit growing, but these are called growth stocks. 41 can go 31 and then go 21. Unless you're giving cash dividends, I have a sad story for you. You might get killed. Is Jollibee with rising inflation really deserving to trade at 230 pesos? Well, I have a question for you. Is Jollibee going to be able to pass on a 20% price increase of rice and beef and chicken and ask you to pay 20% more for a hamburger yum just because you love Bea Alonso? I don't think so. Therefore, even the restaurants is going to have a hard time. So that means even Jollibee is going to have a hard time. Now, of course, that is called margin pressure. Nikki, if you are so bearish, where then should I park my money? Well, you know, it's very hard, but uh, here's what's going to happen. Uh, it, indeed, there might come a point in time, guys. I know that this became a safe haven. PLDT is a safe haven, but I would also disagree that 1.9 pesos is safe, you know? Why? Because at 1.112 or 1.4, it's probably safe to buy there. At 1.9, what type of valuations are we paying for PLDT today, guys? The valuations of PLDT today are also stretched. How about Globe? At 3-4, that doesn't inspire me to say that this is a value play. Even your dividend names are a little bit expensive. Meralco, is that a safe haven? You know, ask yourself, yes, it's not as if puputulan natin ng kuryente lahat ng tao sa Pilipinas. We need electricity. We need internet. But ask yourself, at 309, do you think that people will not sell first and then ask questions later? So in other words, if I'm so scared of the Philippine market, what happens, Nikki, to Nicolasia? Nicolasia is a different style. Why is Nicolasia going to 583? Well, take a look at nickel prices. Okay, um, nickel prices kasi, you just cannot produce nickel everywhere in the world. It's a scarce commodity, just like Bitcoin, just like silver, just like gold. These are what you call, I cannot produce it even if I wanted to. The only thing that I could do is actually what you, yeah, sa lupa. Yeah, is ididig mo siya sa lupa. So the thing is, kahit yung oil, what's gonna happen? Guys, what's gonna happen to oil? Magmumura ba yung oil? Kaya ba natin, guys, mag-produce ng more oil even if we wanted to, to contain inflation? Hindi. Nagwa-war pa nga eh. Nagkukulang pa nga ng supply eh. Ayan, no, $85 yung oil. Is there reason to believe that babagsak yung prices ng oil? No. Malamang may profit-taking sometimes if some people wants. Pero kung nagtataas bilihin, I have another question for you. Are you gonna spend like hell? Like crazy? No. An average consumer naghihirap siya, will not spend. And an economy that does not spend means death for tourism. Unfortunately for Seb, you have to attacks. Meron ka ng pandemic, meron ka pang oil inflation. Actually guys, kahit na 42 is cheap, baka mabili mo ang, ang Seb at 40 or 38 or 37. Um, kasi mahirapan din si Seb eh. I know it's damn cheap, pero cheap can be cheaper. Market is uh, unlikely to go up in this type of environment. Um, I think that the market is trying to put all their money in REITs. But I also have to ask the questions, you know what? Why are people in the Philippines so gung-ho with Ayala REITs? From 26 to 52, you, you should probably be thinking yourself, mag-sell na lang kayo. M REITs, it's trading at 21. I know it 
you know, some people might just say, sige, park ko na lang yung pera ko sa REITs, but I'm so scared that even REITs, um, yeah, they do have like 5% dividends and so forth, but I still ask the question why, how sustainable is that dividend too? Seriously, are people gonna pay rental to the moon? Di ko sure, guys. I think like Awesome 10 X believes, I believe, the market's gonna go to hell. And, and, um, in a go-to-hell scenario, the best way is to short the market. So I'm actively advocating Filipinos, actually, in the Awesome 10X classes, to be short the markets. Because a bearish market is bearish inverse ETFs. You go long inverse stocks, inverse ETFs. In the Philippines, you don't know how to short, right? So you have to go to the U.S. Meron kang EPHE, i-short mo to. I-short mo to. Uh, 34, 31, pabagsakin mo 28 dollars yan. Okay, let's take a look at some questions here. 44 to 50 pesos ang takal-takal. How about rebalancing play? Um, To me, rebalancing is like a short-term thing. My view is like more one year na parang the dollar pesos gonna shoot inflation, 52. The dollar pesos like gonna go haywire. I don't think that the Philippine markets can handle it. Buko Pandan, okay, um, hi, hi to Petron are stagnant. I'll tell you why. I learned that Philippine Petron does not pay dividends. Take a look at Exxon Mobil. Ah. When oil prices was rising, Exxon Mobil kept on printing money, 60 to 73. I had to sell my Petron in the Philippines after learning na shocks lahat ng kinikita ni Petron pambayad sa preferred shares, hindi sa stockholders. Parang ganito, guys. Every time kumikita si Ayala Land, chances are kay arit niya binibigay yung income. Actually, it's a question nga on my part, eh. If every income of the property stocks is gonna be paid to the dividend owners, what would the Ayala Land shareholders do? Eh di lahat ng Ayala Land pumunta na lang sa arit. Lahat ng Mega World shareholders nag-MRIT. Lahat ng Robinsons Land owners nag-RCR. Di ba? Like parang... Kung ganun naman pala, lahat ng income ilalagay sa dividend names. Ano pa purpose ng mga to? So si Shell, hindi yan namimigay ng dividends. Unless magbayad ng dividends si Shell, actually Royal Dutch Shell abroad nagbayad ng dividends. Kaya saved yan. Look at Royal Dutch Shell. Um, all time high. Ayun no, Royal Dutch Shell. Pero ang problema sa Pilipinas, kumikita ka ng income, hindi naman nagbabayad. Sasabihin walang income. So, ano mangyayari sa portfolio ng stocks na yun? Eh di, wala. Nobody's gonna care. Hindi ka pala magbibigay ng dividends eh. The, the, the oil companies abroad, uh, actually energy stocks abroad, with the rising prices of oil, guys, Chevron, Exxon Mobil, Royal Dutch Shell, British Petroleum have gone up and up and up. Because what? They're paying dividends. Petron is paying the dividends via the preferred shares. Royal Dutch Shell, like the Philippine Dutch Shell, uh, Philippine Shells, Shell Pilipinas, zero dividend. So parang for me, nobody's gonna park their money there. So actually, I had to sell, uh, cost ko sa Petron was like 3.8, tinapon kong 3.30, sabi ko wala kang kwenta, kay Nickel Asia ako. At least kay Nickel Asia nagbabayad ng mga dividendo. Si dividends, uh, I, I, I've parked in Nickel Asia because I think like 5 peso, 5.50. Limpak-limpak na salapi si Mr. Nicolasia. Magbabayad ng dividends, so nickel prices are rising, may dividends na assurance. Tapos, pag di sila nagbayad ng dividend, lokohin nila yung lelang nila kasi ang laki ng kinikita ng nickel prices ngayon. Tesla has no choice but to buy nickel and lithium at high prices kung gusto nila magkaroon ng 1 million vehicles to sell. So guys, utak lang din. Greetings. Is it okay to buy GMA for the April dividend? Last year, they gave a very high dividend. I don't know kasi the thing about these corporations, hindi kasi strict yung dividend policy nila. Minsan meron, minsan wala. Unpredictable. Mas gusto ko kasi na predictable. Sample, let's say PLDT bigla na lang nag-collapse ng 1.6 or 1.5. 1.4, 1.5, 1.6. Ang sasabihin ko sa'yo is, Siguro, bibili ako PLDT. Let's say Meralco went down to 290. 
bibilhin ko yon. Kasi sigurado ko, for the last 20 years of existence nitong mga companies na to, every year nagbabayad siya ng dividend. Now, etong FNI and Mark, which I said na nagbibigay ng dividends last year, to be honest, hindi kasi ako sigurado kung mamimigay ng dividend. Kung sabihin nila tomorrow, sure, dividend policy yan. 80-90% of my income, bayad dividend yan for 2022 going forward, baka magkaroon ng interest yon. But if they are like unpredictable na wedding special dibs today, next year hindi, sorry na lang, wala kaming clear-cut dividend policy, walang maniniwala sa mga companies na yan. Actually, in my view, one thing that SM can do to save itself in this turnaround transition, kasi they're getting attacked by Shopee, attacked by Gcash, attacked by Grab, attacked by um, Pure Gold. Obviously, yung retail spending ng tao from SM Supermarket na punta sa Pure Gold, na punta sa SNR, pati si Mary Mart gusto pa kunin, pati sino pa ba, uh, si, si Villar, di ba? Kinukuha rin niya yung supermarket spending ng tao. In other words, guys, SM is getting killed on so many fronts. Now, the best thing that SM can do is, since sobrang healthy ng balance sheet mo, and you don't have much growth, one thing for people to buy it is to actually impose either a dividend policy for every income. Sabi na natin sa 20 billion or 40 billion income, SM, if it can just uh, deploy, say, 3% dividend yield, 30 pesos, magkano ba dividends ngayon ni SM? Tingnan natin na. SM dividend history. So SM is paying less than 1%, 4 pesos lang. ba? So walang kwenta. Um, to me, to me lang, if SM has very little debt and SM is in a transition phase, transition to digitize, dapat SM should reward their shareholders na to give them enough chance to prove na kaya ni BDO to beat the GCash na kaya ni BDO maging super digitalized, na kaya ni BDO tong challenges ahead. That BDO can beat SM, uh, that SM can also go head-to-head -head with Lazada and Shopee. If they can provide that confidence, I might change my mind. But I don't, I'm not confident. So that's why I am advocating a short on the Philippine markets through EPHE, and I'd stay parked in safety nets. Um, Mondenisen, I think, is like a rebalancing play. Uh, I think Monde could enter the Philippine market because Pancit Canton is a consumer staple good. When the world crumbles, pag wala ka ng makain, kakainin mo na lang Pancit Canton for life. So it's actually a company na kinakain in a recessionary environment and in a depressionary environment. So um, I'd say that Monday and URC is actually gonna stay afloat in a world which which, which is chaotic. So like Monday Nissan, I think just in case it falls now 16 or 15, I think I'm a I'm a contrarian buyer here. URC, I'm also a contrarian buyer here if it falls now mga 125 even at 120. Um, so there are a few pockets of um. There are a few pockets of companies that I think I can save my money in. As I said, I think nickel prices are not going to go down. So I think I'm safe there. Actually, DMC is also a safe play for me. Kasi DMC is already assuring people na may dividends yan no matter what. Kaya tingna mo, DMC is super strong pa rin. So I have no change in mind. I have no change in view na basta if you're a dividend paying company, okay ka. Um, yun, yun yung reason kaya stagnant si Petron, yes. It took me a while, napakatanga nga eh. Kasi I was looking at Chevron, I was looking at ExxonMobil, sabi ko, bakit kumikita yung mga oil stocks ko abroad? Bakit yung oil stocks sa Pilipinas? Hindi. Tapos na-realize ko, ay tanga, hindi pala nabibigay dividend to, ang tanga-tanga naman. Nakalimutan ko actually na, o nga no, lahat ng income ni Petron, pinupunta niya sa preferred shares. Kasi naman eh, itong mga company sa Pilipinas, ayaw mamigay ng dividends eh. Yon, sige, yun lang masasabi ko and hope you have a good day. See you again. Awesome to next Philippine Market Update Wednesday. Bye-bye. That's it. Please don't forget to like and share.